must admit the other night, it was the other night, when was it? December. It was a real thrill to, uh, to, to win uh, a couple of awards that night. Um, yeah, I wish my head the next day felt as good. Um, um, I'm uh, Director of h and Architects, as said. Um, a lot of our work is in the hospitality sector, be that um, pubs like we're about to go through now, uh, restaurants, bars, accommodation, multifaceted um, venues that basically engage hugely with people. And that's a large part of what we do is really interact with our, our patrons. Um, we're very lucky in that we have half a dozen really successful clients, predominantly in Sydney. Um, they see us very much as partners in their businesses. We have a fantastic amount of fun with all of our projects and the way we work. It's a huge part of what drives us to do what we do. Um, and I'm going to also say our building doesn't have CLT, so I feel like a bit of a leper <laughs> in amongst all the buildings here today. Um, but I will start. Uh, Waterfront Tavern, this project came to us, gosh, um, we were designing a pub for one of our other clients in Central Park in Sydney with Fraser's, who a very large Sydney-based property developer. And Simone Dyer is their national design director, tapped me on the shoulder and said, we've got this problem project in Shell Cove. And I said, what's Shell Cove? And she explained to me this site. Um, this project had been going for them for, you know, about, for about 25 years. Um, you've got to realise Lang Walker started the project and then Lang sold his business to Australand and then Australand got gobbled up and that became Fraser Properties. Um, this was originally an old golf course, uh, a swamp, and a site of landfill. Um, just the laser button, the little red one. There we go. So the golf course wrapping around this, and these are the beaches. And what Fraser's had envisaged was this amazing project about building a new town centre. And that's just a bit of a blurb about what they were after and so forth. But what they ended up building was this incredible facility, which covers, I'm just trying to remember, I think from memory the harbour is about 12 hectares of harbour. Um, all of these groin structures were brand new. The reason it took so long through state government was obviously trying to convince the EPA that cutting through a beach and creating a new harbour is slightly controversial. Um, but it's, it's an amazing project where you know, a lot of houses, some of which you can argue is good, bad or indifferent, but you know, a new town centre, there's going to be another accommodation hotel and our humble little project here sitting in as I said, when Simone Dyer first pulled me aside and said we need to do this project, I'd love to get involved in this thing. Um, she explained what they were doing. Their total build on this thing was is in excess of $2 billion by the time they've done. So it's a big job. And as I said, 25 years. Must admit, we did feel a bit of the pressure when you suddenly realised how prominent the site was and how important it was for them. And you think, right, um, you've put a pub in your most prominent site. Um, so completely master planned. It was always going to be a pub. And thankfully, we got this amazing task of connecting, I think working with Group GSA who were doing the urban design outcomes and so forth with the way that their retail precinct worked and then moving across to the pub that sat here in this new foreshore promenade and so forth. An amazing project to get involved with, incredibly exciting. Um, as I say, you can kind of see the diversity of uses and so forth. And when we first went to site, that's what we were, we saw. Um, a massive amount of earthworks and so forth, revetment walls to form up the harbour, a thousand timber piles, a shitload of concrete, heaps of rocks, and our little pub was designed to sit, I'm just trying to remember where are we, about here. And we actually had convinced Fraser's that it was a good idea to actually hang the building out over the harbour, um, which then formed up some other issues, um, some fun things around it, and I hate to say it, I think there was a question about timber piles before. There were no timber piles here, this was all concrete. Um, we hadn't even had fun how to actually get the truck down to the revetment wall to actually put the piers in. So there was all sorts of construction issues. But our little project was all about creating an authentic place um, and a bespoke hospitality offer. When we first started looking at it, um, given that it's a working harbour and so forth as well, there's a lot of fishing boats and other things that the, the, uh, the council wants to engage in here, was this idea of creating a building that was for today but not of today. So we wanted to create something that's going to age look like it's been there for a long time because one of the things that bothered me about a lot of the master planning in the area was every building there and I think I find this even when you're driving to an area like this one of the things that bothers me always is you walk into something new and every building shouting at you saying I'm new 
And so for us, creating something that was a little less new and a little bit more when was it built was important to us. Um, and so we really wanted to create this environment where people really wanted to engage with the site. Um, sorry, I've had this in my notes. Um, and created an experience where people really wanted to engage with the building. So our design narrative was very much placed around this idea of timber buildings and historically how they would sit into a harbour environment. Um, Sydney, for argument's sake, that's Woolloomooloo, but the finger wharves around at Millers Point and so forth, we've got a fantastic heritage of timber buildings like this. They also do have them in Wollongong as well. So for us, creating a timber building like this was a really lovely opportunity. Um, so once again, just a building that's going to better for the community at a focal point on the harbour's edge. Um, we do a lot of hand sketching in our practice, um, so it was a lot of design studies looking at very simple pavilion forms. Um, when we design our hospitality projects, pavilions are wonderful things because they give you an opportunity to express the program graphically for a, for a patron. So they can kind of self-work out where the hell they are at a building, if it's a big building, by actually understanding the structure, the roof forms and so forth. Um, when we were doing these these original sketches, you know, we, we were certainly very keen to pursue a timber building, but I must admit we were a little bit hands and, you know, tongue, uh, heart in our mouth as to whether or not anyone was going to want to engage with paying for it. Um, pubs are very much commercial ventures and they've got to return something. So finding a balance there. Um, but the flip side of that, though, was given the coastal environment, really harsh, really harsh environment. The weather changes here all the time. Um, making sure that what we were doing with the building materially and so forth so that it aged well. So it became very easy, ultimately, to convince our clients at Fraser's that, yep, yeah, you know what, building it out of timber, because I must admit the one of their retail buildings around the corner had the, uh, the faux aluminium timber looking stuff all over it, and we were a bit like, oh shit, are we going to face the same problems? Um, thank God we stuck to our guns. We did argue the case really hard. Um, this is an early CAD model, which was start, sort of starting to suggest some of the roof forms and some of the cladding details, a rigorous geometry that we wanted to impose on the building. Um, and then, so we ended up with a, a materials palette that was incredibly simple and, and very much dictated by the longevity and life expectancy of the timbers um, and well, all of the built forms. So we ended up with a mixture of off form concrete, um, zinc roofing, and everything else was timber. And then with the timber species, we, God, um, I think someone made a comment about having a piece of CLT hanging off the back of their deck with colours on it. We, I don't know how many bits of timber we had hanging off the back of our building where we have our office. Um, looking at differences and so forth, we eventually struck on using a coir um, for most of our for the, the timber work in this building. Um, mainly because it doesn't rot, it's incredibly stable, it doesn't warp and twist and given the way that we wanted to articulate the facades, particularly on this building, it seemed to be a, almost inevitably it came down to it was really the only material that we could use that was going to give a warranty. Um, once again, a commercial building, our clients wanted to understand um, if it goes pear-shaped, who's paying? So that also became a massive factor in what we were doing. We ended up putting up a sample of the facade of the building on site when we first started. Um, we had a couple of different bits of timber in there. We had different cuts. Was it off-sawn? Was it um, uh, wire-brushed, smooth-faced? We put some up and stained some. We left some as raw acquire just to see what would happen. And eventually we got to a point after six months of going down into the site and so forth and the sample just sitting there in the sun baking away and we realised that the, the acquire was just greying off to a natural grey. But the acquire itself as a, as a product straight off the blade is probably not the most appealing thing. So we ended up putting a grey wash over the whole thing just to get a nice finish straight off the bat. But that then informed a lot of the other design decisions. I'll just quickly touch on some of the planning because this is a, pro, a forum mainly around timber construction. So I won't bore you about the intricacies of planning out a 600 person pub. Um, but we had some really interesting problems here to solve in that we, we had a, an incredible adjacency to a residential building that sat here we had these fabulous views and so forth. We had to service the building, create a back of house experience. There was the predominance of the big family friendly pub. We also had a, a sports bar here that was to facilitate the yacht club next door and the, the, the fishing clubs and so forth. 
Once again, the idea of these pavilion forms laid out very much helps to articulate the plan so that someone who's visiting the building really almost by default gets an understanding of how the program works. So it's really quite a lovely way to deal with things. Um, once again, probably just getting into some more technical drawings. Our roof forms and so forth, one of the things that was really important for us on this project was to make sure that all of our services and in any hospitality building, you've you got everything in there. Um, there's a huge amount of services uh, coordination that goes into a building like this. We had to make sure that everything was hidden inside the roof form, so there was no ductwork, no plant space, no nothing that was on the roof visible, because once again, there was a residential building behind us that sort of had to maintain views and so forth. Um, I'll just quickly skip through. We ended up at one stage, I think if you noticed on the earlier <coughs> perspective drawing, we had four almost identical sectioned pavilions and we ended up playing around with the idea at one stage of this quite lovely little gesture of the, the harbour entrances bore to this side so we sort of just tilted the hat of the, of the building so that the, the roof form just lifts its, its lid a little bit. Um, and then I think my Glenn, my business partner, hated me for the next six months as he tried to work out how the hell we're going to build this thing out of zinc. Um, but that's what you do to your friends. Um, some photos during construction and so forth, as I said, so we ended up with this unusual mixture of concrete and timber and, and bricks and rocks and revetment walls and so forth. Um, as I say, unfortunately not CLT, it was a steel frame building. <laughs> um, that went together really quite quite well, to be honest. Uh, obviously that's an earlier photo with everything sort of sticked and so forth on site. One of the things that was interesting for us as well, um, using the, the zinc roofing and so forth, one of the things that you, we, we learnt fairly quickly from the suppliers was, um, oh, and by the way, you can't touch the zinc onto the Akoya because you get a reaction from the acids in the timber onto the zinc. Thanks for telling us that. Um, so everything had to be redesigned as stainless steel flashings and so forth underneath the zinc so that we didn't have any any reactions either way. Um, the cladding details was, was wonderful. I must admit, every, every piece of timber on here, nothing was preformed. Everything just turned up on side as a stick. We had an amazing team of carpenters who just put this whole thing together. It was a, a really fabulous thing to be a part of. And I think that's a big thing for us that we like to play with is this idea of craft and of, of really utilising our the trades and so forth and what their skill sets are. So we would sit there with them on side as much as we had some fantastic, well, as much as we had a really strong idea of how this building should go together, we certainly did sit there with our carpenters and talking about how we're going to house our different joints and constructions and so forth to make sure that the thing lasted and spent the distance. I must admit this photo I took and I was, I think this was one of our early night trips when the lights were turned on for the first time and I think as much as we thought the building was going to be good, when we saw the lights on for the first time, I thought, oh, this is actually going to be really, really special as an environment. Um, as we're sort of talking about the ideas of how all the, the construction of the timber and so forth, and it really literally was. Guys on site picking up bits of timber, nothing was pre-assembled. Um, moving on to the inside, all of the internal timbers are a mixture of pine and American oak. Um, pine, because a coir fundamentally is just pine, um, so we wanted a similar grain structure, but where we have patrons interacting with it, particularly around bars and kitchens and so forth, American oak is a much more robust timber and it's, it's, it's going to handle the conditions a bit better. Um, lots of acoustic attenuation and so forth integrated into these timber ceiling structures and so forth as well. So, And then probably the other big thing for us was, and you can kind of see them opening here, um, the facade on this building is completely operable. Um, one of the big things we started looking at early on in this project was the fact that, the, as I said, the, wind, the, the weather can change fairly abruptly in an afternoon. So you can have a wonderfully fantastic day and then suddenly you get a southeasterly that springs up and the rain moves in you get a rain squall and one of the things we didn't want to do was have 800 people there on a Sunday afternoon enjoying themselves and then suddenly a rainstorm comes through and we lose half the patrons. So with a flick of a button, facades come down, get full weather, uh, weather containment. Um, one of the other things that's lovely about this as well is it does give us the ability that we can shut this thing down and at night we can, you know, there can be a band playing and or a, a still a lot of noise being generated from inside the venue and we're not upsetting the neighbours, which is also a really lovely way of dealing with things. It, it works a treat. Mm -hmm.